Good morning to all of you, and, and we welcome you once again to the exciting services here at the Great Emmanuel Baptist Church and, and our Sunday School uh, uh, Overview lesson. And uh, I want to begin the lesson by just recounting a little incident that happened to me many, many years ago when I was a young man. Yes, believe it or not, I was, I was a young man once. Some of you may not, but I was maybe about in my 20s, and my dear beloved friend and brother, the Reverend Ronnie LaMail and I, we was on our way back from a, from a, uh, from a time when we went to the old Bronco Bowl out there on, on uh, Fort Worth Avenue, somewhere there, and we, and we were just driving along, having a good time, and, and you can't hang around my brother Ron without cracking up and laughing. And we was laughing and having a good time. And out of nowhere, this police car came up behind us with the flashing lights. And so I stopped and immediately pulled over. And the police officer, who happened to be white, got out and approached the car and ordered us to get out of the vehicle and to go stand in front of the car. And then he proceeded to, to go through my car searching like he was looking for something and never a word of why he stopped us or what we could have possibly done me and ron looking at each other what's what's going on here man then a second police officer arrived he got out his vehicle and he was just a little more talkative than the other guy he walked up to us and he says uh you boys know why you got stopped and we said no sir he said, well, my buddy saw, saw y'all driving by and, 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 and he saw one of you doing this and he thought y'all were smoking. And, and so he pulled y'all over to, to look for something. See, what he didn't know was my brother Ron was laughing so hard, he kept putting his hand over his mouth and he thought Ron was smoking. But this police officer, you know, uh, went through the car and he didn't, of course, he didn't find anything. And, and, and he came back and all he said was, okay, y'all can go. Never apology, never saying, I'm sorry I stopped y'all, never saying, well, anything, just got in the car and left. Now, I'm sure many of you could probably recount stories of where you experienced some form of injustice. For from the very first moment that our forefathers' toes smudged the sands of this new world, we have experienced some form of racial injustice. But you know what I've discovered is that injustice just doesn't happen to black people. Injustice happens to all kinds of people. Sometimes it's racial injustice. Sometimes it's cultural injustice. Sometimes it's political injustice. But whatever form it takes, it is injustice. And our Sunday school theme for this quarter is God requires justice. And, and, and in today's lesson, we're going to talk about the, the cry of every human heart is where can I find justice? See, I, the, the lesson today is going to talk about the source of justice. Because everybody wants justice. And, and, and our print passage will be Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. And, 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 and I'm going to tie this to Christmas. Because you know, normally the, the Sunday before Christmas, we usually normally have a lesson from either Matthew's gospel or or Luke's gospel about the birth of Jesus. But I'm going to show you how Isaiah ties this to, to justice. Now, Isaiah, who is the son of Amos, was a prophet primarily called to prophesy to the southern kingdom of Judah during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. You can find that in verse 1. Of chapter 1. Now his prophetic call to, 
to ministry is actually recorded in chapter 6 of this same book. Now, at the time of his ministry, the nation of Israel was in decline. The sins of the people had brought down God's certain sure wrath and judgment on them. The northern kingdom of Israel would soon be carried away in the captivity by the Assyrian army. But Judah, though spared at this time, would soon, because they refused to repent and get right, would soon be carried away some hundred years later into Babylonian captivity. Now, while verses chapters 1 through 39 mostly speak of, of God's pronouncement of judgment upon his people for their sins, there are highlights during that chapter where, where God displays his awesome mercy by promising reconciliation and restoration for his people. And in our text today, we're going to get a little glimpse of God's promise of restoration for his people and also a promise that they're going to receive what we've all been asking for, true justice. All right. So let, let us, if you have your Bibles or your Sunday school books, uh, let's turn to Isaiah chapter 9, and we're going to begin at verse 2. And uh, we're going we're gonna to look at the description of a new day. The description of a new day. That, that, would, that would be verses 2 through 5. Then we're going to end up with the source and permanence of a new day, chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. And we're going to try to get through this in a timely manner because there, there, this is, there's so much in this. I, I just didn't, I was like an ant at a picnic, just didn't know where to start. <laughs> this, this, okay, the description of, of, of a new day, let's look at verse 2. It says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them light has shined. Now, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 16, Matthew applies the fulfillment of this verse to Jesus Christ. And he is, is sharing that when Jesus Christ came on the scene, mm -hmm. that the people in the land of Zebulun and Naphtali, which is where the, the, the city of Capernaum was, which was sort of Jesus' in, earthly ministry headquarters would receive a new life and that and that this is a promise that even though we live in a world of darkness light is going to shine and when do light shine the brightest when it's when it's against a dark background now, now, I know a lot of us looking at the world today and you say, boy, it looks dark. Mm. But when Jesus shows up, the brightness of his presence brings light to any dark situation. Now, notice that also in verse 3, it's going to be a day of rejoicing. You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the, when divide the spoil. See, not only does Jesus bring light to dark situations, but he brings joy in the place of sadness. Now, I know during this pandemic, many of us haven't had very much to get excited about. I mean, you know, everything was shut down and we were shut out and shut in to our homes. And we thought, well, no problem. I'll just turn on the TV set. Then we turn on the TV set, and we, we saw that they wasn't even playing professional sports. Come on, son. And, about the only, and, and they wasn't making any new programs because they couldn't go to production. And so, if anything, we, did, we had to watch reruns. Right. But, but you see, when Jesus shows up, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
You know, Jesus bring, brings a, a joy out of a sense of sadness. And look at the analogy here. It says, they rejoice according to the joy of harvest. You see, harvest was a time of rejoicing because you were bringing the crops in. Now, since most of us are not farmers, you can compare this to payday. I don't know about you, but, but I, I get excited when payday comes. You know, I, I go grab my little laptop and, I, and I, I'll open up that laptop, go to my bank account and, and see, if, see if old Eastfield College left me some, left me some love offer in there. And when I, when I see that increased balance, I get happy. So, so when Jesus comes into our lives, he brings joy, just like payday. But notice what it says, and men rejoice when they divide, divide the spoil. Now, you know, when, when, when people would conquer other nations, then they would divide the spoil. And, and, and this guy said, look, look what I got here. And the other guy said, look what I got. There would be a time of, of, of rejoicing. Well, you know, we, we, since we don't go around conquering people, you might compare this to, 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 the, to the time when, 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 when someone rich passed away and they leave you some money. And you said, man, you know, let me, let me see how much, how much they left for me. But the point is that, that Jesus, when he shows up, he brings light to dark places. Right. And when Jesus shows up, he brings rejoicing for sadness. Come on. But also when Jesus shows up, he brings, he brings a day of liberation. Look at verses four through five. But you have broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian, for every warrior's sandal from the noisy battle and the garments rolled in blood will be used for burning and for fuel of fire. You, you see, it's one thing to be free physically, okay. but it's, it's another thing to be free spiritually. Right. Sure. Be because even though we accredit Abraham Lincoln for signing the Emancipation Proclamation that, that let all the slaves go free, we soon found out that we, still, we, we were still in bondage. We, we, we found out that there were still places we couldn't go. We found out that there were still things that we couldn't do. But, but when Jesus comes into your life, that's when you experience true liberation. That's when all the shackles are, are, are taken off. That's when you, when you experience joy and freedom that, that nothing else can replace. Not, not in, in our text, he compares it to the day of Midian. Now, this goes back to the time of the judges. And you know, during the time of the judges, when Israel would sin, God would, would punish them by letting another nation come in and oppress them. Then when the children of Israel cried out to God, God would send his deliverance. And then one occasion, he allowed the Midianites to come in and oppress them. They cried out to God, and God had mercy, and God raised up a little guy named Gideon. And you took 300 men and, 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 and conquered over 100,000 Midianite troops. And, 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 and they said that, you know, when Jesus shows up, it's going to be liberations like that. That, that Jesus is, is going to break the yoke that, that men says can't be broken. He's going, to do the, he's going to do what people said is in the impossible. And also, notice it said, for every warrior's sandal and the noisy battle and garments rolled in blood will be used for the burning and fuel of fire. Now, when, when the victors would conquer uh, uh, other people, anything that was worthless, they would burn it. And, and, and you see, well, what this is saying is, is, that, is, is that don't worry about the enemy. Come on. Right. Don't worry about the people that's bothering you on your job or disturbing you in your neighborhood or maybe even getting on your nerves at church because because this verse reminds us that when Jesus shows up on the scene, when he gives true liberation, you know, he takes care 
of the enemy where you don't ever have to worry about them again. But, but here's the, this part that I'm getting excited about. And, 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 and if I get to run around the church after this, you know my Pentecostal side came out. You just let me run, I'll come back. But it's, 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 the, it's the, the permanent, the source and permanence of the new day. Verses 6 through verse 7. Mm -hmm. Notice what it says here. For unto us a child is born. Right. For unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Mm -hmm. Now, in this verse right here, we are promised that God is going to send us somebody who's going to give us true justice. Right. Notice, notice in Texas it says that a child is born. This talks about his humanity. Emmanuel yes. didn't begin to exist in Bethlehem. Right. He existed from all eternity. Right. Jesus of Nazareth is God taking on human form yes. right. and coming down to live with us. And, and that's why it says the son is given. That talks about his deity. And notice what it says, it says, and the government will be upon his shoulder. You see, the, the thing that, that should get us excited about Christmas is not only did God send us a savior, not only did God send us a deliverer, but God sent us a judge who will judge righteously and fairly. Because it says the government is going to be on his shoulders. Is that when Jesus comes, he didn't do it the first time because he came to save it from our sin. But when he comes back the second time, he's coming to take over. He's coming to he's coming to put all the boys in Washington D.C. out of business. He's coming to put all the boys in Moscow out of a job. He's coming to put everybody in Beijing out on the streets because the government will be squarely on him and he will be the final ruler of the world. There was, when Jesus gets here, there will be no more elections, no more primaries and no more uh, uh, voting and, and see who's going to be in office because when Jesus comes, when Jesus shows up and he takes over, the government. He's going to be the one and only permanent ruler. I don't know about you, that gets me excited. <laughs> because I get worried every four years, but when Jesus comes, I won't have to worry about who, who's running things anymore. But, but, but look at the, 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 the description of this judge that's coming. All right. Now, the, the, the uh, King James translators incorrectly put a comma behind wonderful because it's actually supposed to be wonderful counselor. Mm -hmm. Wonderful counselor. Now, one of the things that that lawyers are known also as, they call them counselors. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they say counselor, you got, you got anything for the defense. Mm -hmm. When he says wonderful counselor, that means that, that when you got Jesus on your side, right. when you got Jesus defending you, you, you know the verdict is going to turn out right because, because he's not going to give you any bad counsel. And notice it says, mighty God. This, this, this talks about his power. When Jesus comes to take over, when Jesus comes to judge, he's going to come to judge with all power and authority in his hands and nobody Nobody will be, be will be able to overcome his judgment or, or, or usurp his authority because he's a mighty God and whatever you need, he'll be able to do it. You want to come to Jesus with a promise, Jesus said, I'm sorry, I can't handle that. But, but he's a mighty God who can handle anything. And, and, and it, it talks about everlasting, 
everlasting Father, which, which means that He's gonna He's gonna take care of us like a father takes care of his children, and and He's gonna love us and always be there for us. And there's nothing we will ever be able to do to make Jesus say, "I'm sick of you. Get out." Of Get out of here. I don't want you anymore. He's going to be the everlasting father who always loves and takes care of his children. Oh, boy. That don't got shot. I don't know whether. And then he's talking about he's the, he's the prince of peace. Oh, if, if there's anything we need in a day and hour today, we need some peace. You know, we, 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 we know how things have been lately. And, and now I was telling the, the preacher this morning that when this pandemic hit, I didn't know if I was going to have a job. But, but, but I had the Prince of Peace with me, and every time I would get down and pray and say, Lord, I don't know if I'm going to have a job. He said, don't worry about it. I got you covered. <laughs> Just relax. I got you covered. And he did. Even during the pandemic, never lacked a want for nothing, never had a bill that didn't get paid. <laughs> never had a, a, a need that didn't fulfill. He gave me a peace that said, don't worry about it. I'm going to take care of you. And he was true to your word. So, so when Jesus shows up as the judge, he's going to give us a peace that passes all understanding. And then, then, then notice what it says, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. This talks about the Again, the permanency of, of, of his government. There will, there, there, there will be no coups, no revolutions, no, nobody sneaking in and, 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 and taking over, over his throne. One of the things that I do sometimes that when I get up in the morning, I, I, I be worshiping the Lord, and I say, Lord, I thank you that the same Lord that was on the throne last night is still on the throne yeah. this morning. Yeah. I, I thank you, Lord, that while I slept in summer last night, the devil didn't sneak in and knock you off the throne, and now he's sitting on the throne. I thank you, Lord, that, that while I slept in summer last night, that, that, that the world didn't sneak in and knock you off your throne, and the world is running things. I thank you, Lord, that while I slept last night, that, that, the, that the flesh didn't sneak in and knock you off your throne, and now the flesh is running things. But the same Lord, same God who was on the throne in control last night when I laid down the same one that, that, that's there this morning. There will be no end. And notice it says, upon the throne of David and over his kingdom. When Jesus comes back to be the final judge, we won't be going to Washington, D.C. We won't be going to Beijing, China. We won't be going to Moscow. If you want to talk to Jesus, you have to go to Jerusalem. Because he's going to, he's going to set up his throne in Jerusalem. And from Jerusalem, you know, that's where his rule and reign is going to be over the, over the, over the entire world. And notice it says to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice. Now, now this word order in the Hebrew means to... To, to fix something, to set something up, to prepare something. Then establish means to strengthen, to, to uh, support. In other words, when he comes to reign, he's going to fix his government in such a way that, 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 that nobody will, will, will have any complaints about it. Nobody would say, you know, we're tired of this Jesus. We want to we wanna, we wanna vote somebody else in office. When he sets up his government, it will be fixed and set, and nobody will be able to change it. But notice again, it says, from, from that time forward and even forevermore, again, once he sets up his rule and reign of, 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 of judgment, it's going to be fixed. You, you know today, and I, I got to hurry, my time is almost up. You know today, you know, when, when you go to court and trial, you know, the judge has to use certain what they call precedents. Mm -hmm. You know, in other words, you look at past cases and how they ruled in a certain way, and sometimes that affects how he, he uh, rules in your favor. But when Jesus established his government, that's only going to be one way. Yeah. It's, it's going to be his way. 
And, 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 when, and when you come before him, there's going to be one way you're going to get judged, and that's by his word. It won't be by what someone else did in another case or another ruling. It's going to be his way and his way only. And then again, it closes by saying, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Which basically means that the word zeal in Hebrew means eagerness, fervor, enthusiasm, passion. This verse reminds us that this is, this is no idle promise. You know, you know, every four years, we have to go through the same process. We have these, these guys and gals getting up there and promising, if you put me in office, I'm going to do this for you. If you elect me, I'm going to give you this. And then sometimes when we put them up there, they forget about everything they promised. But, but, but this verse says that, that, that God says, everything that I promise you, I'm going to give it to you exactly how I said I'm going to give it to you. And you can take it to the bank. That, 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 that if God said it, he's going to do it. If he spoke it, he's going to bring it to pass. Yeah. So we cry in our hearts today for justice. Mm -hmm. And we long for somebody to give us righteousness and true justice. But our lesson today tells us don't worry about it. God's judge is coming. And 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 and, and, and I, I, I like what, what 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 it says over in 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 John's gospel where where, where it, it reminds us that that God has committed all judgment to Jesus. And the reason why God committed all judgment to Jesus, and I'm almost there, my time is almost up, is because Jesus was a human just like us. You see, if we go before God for judgment, we say, God, you don't know what it's like to, to be homeless. You, 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 never, you never experienced hunger. You never experienced betrayal. How, how can you judge me and you've never been where I'm at? But see, when God sends his judge, the God man, and we go before him and we say, Lord, you don't know, he said, yes, I do. I know exactly what what, what, it, what it felt like. I know what it's like to be persecuted. I know what it's like to be misunderstood. I know what it's like to be wrongful, wrongfully accused and un, unjustly sentenced. I've been there. And so, so because he knows what we go through, then we know that he can give us the right judgment for our situation that, that will be for our good and for our glory. So I just want to close real quick. I time us up. Let's remember that Christmas is not about a savior coming. It's, it's, it's not about just a deliverer coming from sin, but it's God sending the true source of justice. And that, and that one day when he's on the throne, when he's running things, He's going to set everything right. So don't worry about what's going on right now. You got a judge who understands your situation and who's going to, who's going to come and establish his kingdom and rule in total justice and righteousness. And, and we all going to get our fair to it. And let me just, just close with this. Don't be on the wrong side of this judge. Get your life right with him right now. So when you stand before him and he said, why should I let you off? And you said, because of your blood. Yeah. <laughs> because you don't want to stand before him and say, well, you know, I've been a good boy. I went to Sunday school. He said, that's not good enough. Yeah. So make sure that when this judge comes, you're standing on the right side. Let us pray. Most gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for your word today. And we thank you, Father, that in the, in the midst of a world of fear with unjustness, yeah. Yeah. that you have one that you have established who's going to be the final judge who will come and rule and reign in righteousness and true judgment and justice and, 
and he's going to take care of every wrong and every injustice. Father, we pray that you will encourage our heart to help us to trust in him and let him work it out. And when he works it out, we know it's going to be worked out just this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, thank you again for doing this for our Sunday school for you. Don't log out. In just a few moments, we're going to go a little bit higher into our Sunday morning worship service. So, so if I don't see you again, Merry Christmas to all of you and a Happy New Year. God bless
I've just read to you verses 1 through 7 of the second chapter of the Gospel of Lord by St. Luke. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers here and the doers of most holy word. You may be seated at this time, please. As you take your seats, I'm going to invite you to join me in just a uh, just a moment of prayer. Yeah. May we pray. Most gracious Father in heaven, it's once again that with joy and thanksgiving, we come joyfully before your presence. Thanking you, Lord, for being so merciful, so kind, so gracious to undeserving, unworthy sinners such as we are. But we realize, Father, that we haven't been so good, we haven't been so kind, we haven't been so loving that you just had to give us this new day. But we are here this day in your presence because of your great mercy and your great love. And we just want to thank you for that, Father. We want to thank you for sparing our lives just one more time. We want to thank you once more for a reasonable portion of good health and strength. We want to thank you for the activity and use of every joint of our body. We want to thank you, Lord, for shielding and protecting us all night long while we slept. We want to thank you, Lord, for as we walked, we found that we had everything that we needed, Father, and lack of nothing. So we want to thank you, Lord, for God has sent you on the very dangerous streets and highways of this city and allowing us to come safely to this house of worship one more time to give you thanks, Father. But most of all, Father, we want to thank you for the greatest gift that you ever gave to us. We want to thank you, Lord, for, 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 for wrapping your son in human flesh, putting him on a nine-month train down to this earth and dropping him off in a little village called Bethlehem. And we want to thank you, Lord, for covering him with swaddling cloth and laying him in a manger that he might save us from our sins and give us eternal life through his name. And we worship you, Father. We worship you because we had no way of hope of salvation until you sent Jesus. Now because of Jesus, we have hope that we can be saved and forgiven for our sins. And we just worship you, Lord. Thank you for the greatest gift that you ever gave to sinners like us. And we invite you into our presence today, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Pour out your spirit without measure. Find every work of the devil who's going to try to sneak in, disrupt, distract your people from worshiping you and try to snatch the seed of your word before it has a chance to take root and bear fruit in the heart. Have your way. Anoint the reading of scripture. Anoint the praying of prayer. Anoint the worship singing. Anoint the playing of music. But most of all, Father, we pray your anointing upon the man of God who's going to stand behind this sacred desk and declare your everlasting God beyond compromise word. Fill him with your Holy Spirit. Anoint him with preaching power from on high. And give him the strength, Father, to rightly divide and declare your word. And bless your word as it goes forth. Don't let it fall on deaf ears, but let it go and do that which you have purpose to do. To touch every heart, change every life, reclaim that backslider, but most of all, save that sinner. Unless we pray a selfish prayer, Father, we want to pray that you would be a comfort to those in our church family who have lost loved ones during this holiday season, who hearts are heavy with grief because that loved one won't be here for Christmas with them. But in this hour of bereavement, you be their comfort, you be their strength, 
in this very difficult time. And Father, don't forget our brothers and sisters out there who are sick and suffering in their bodies right now. Some are in the hospital and won't be home for Christmas. Some are in nursing homes and other facilities. But you be there for them. You touch them, strengthen them, heal them by your great power. And, and Father, we just pray that whatever situation, circumstances, problems, difficulties, stress that my brothers and sisters might go through, stretch forth that hand of power and deliver right now, Father, through every situation, through every circumstance, through every trial, for your sake and for your glory. And when we leave this place, Father, when we leave this place, Father, May we look back over our shoulders and know that we've done your will and we glorify your name. This is your servant prayer to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. For his name and for his glory. Amen.
preaching hour. I said we up to our preaching hour because we're going higher and higher in the Lord. Listen, we have a guest minister today, uh, one that's familiar with this place. Matter of fact, he had a couple of days of growing up in this place. We want to bring him up in his own way. We're not going to hold him up. It's Reverend Reginald Anderson. Had some ties here, had some ties with Singing Hills, but he's a great man of God, and we want to introduce you to him, and let's want to hear him. Reverend Emerson, come and preach to us in your own way. Amen. I believe we all can say amen. 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 And thank you, Deacon Jennings. Amen. Thank you to the rest of the Deacon staff, the trustees, and all that make up this body. Christ, amen. amen. To our co laborers in the gospel, we thank you for your presence on today. We are so excited about the fact of what God is doing in the life of not some believers, but all believers, amen. 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 I want to acknowledge my wife, my children on today. I'm going to ask you if you would stand so that everyone can see you. I'm elated to have my brother and my sister-in-law with us on today. I want you to stand. God has been so gracious and kind unto us. Yeah, right. Yes, he has. We just can't help but to shout hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 I want to thank that sister for leading us in praise and worship. Amen. Let's give her a hand. Amen. If you would turn to Matthew's gospel. Chapter number one. shall be with child mm -hmm. and bear a son and they called his name Emmanuel yeah. which is translated God with us yeah. you may be seated All right. All right. the grass with the flower thereof faded away right. but the word of our God shall stand last and endure yeah. forever yes, Amen. 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 I want to talk from this thought today. God is with us. God is with us. I want to encourage us as we go through this pandemic. But I also want to cause us to give a more thought concerning our view of Christology. What is Christmas without the Christ? Many tried for a number of years to remove the Son of God Christ, the God man, yeah. from Christmas. Yeah, right. Do I have any witnesses here? Yes, As we travel throughout this land, we've gone into different venues. And upon exiting those venues, individuals have the audacity to say to us, happy holidays. <laughs> Happy holidays. I believe the reason these individuals do this is because 
they don't have the right Christological view. They really, really don't know what Christmas is all about. And so therefore, they try to eradicate, somehow they try to erase Jesus from Christmas. But Jesus, I need to tell you, he's He's been given a name by the Father that has been proclaimed by the prophets. And this name is Emmanuel, meaning God with us. But this name is a name that's above every name. And so I believe we must raise the question, what do we have? when we have Emmanuel with us. Well, what we have is the names of God are concentrated into one name. We have Christ who is very unique. He's not like any other that ever have walked this earth. Turn with me, if you would, to Isaiah chapter nine, verse number six. I want us to explore who Jesus really is. It says, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And so, brothers and sisters, this is Jesus, God's Son from eternity past, who entered history to make a difference that no other could make. In Colossians 1 15, it says that He is the invisible God. Then in Hebrews 1 and 3, it says he is the exact representation of God's nature. So therefore, he is God. And then John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yes, I tell you, he is God with us. John 1 14 says, and the Word became flesh, and then John sums it up in John 1.18 simply states that the word became flesh and came to reveal the Father unto us. Yeah. And so yes, God is with us because in him we have the person who is fully God, but yet he is fully man. Mm -hmm. And don't miss me here. We, we have to understand that even though he's fully man, he is fully God. So, so how, how could anyone erase Jesus from human history? How could anyone erase him from uh, this life knowing that he is the one that created the world? And the Bible said there was nothing that was made that was made that was not made for him, by him, and through him. Yeah, yeah, Let me tell yeah. you this morning that he is the Christ uh -huh. of Christmas. There are any names given to God that is wrapped up in this one name. Again, the name that is above every name. Uh -huh. Not only do we have God with us, but we have Elohim. He's the, the creator, yeah. God. Uh -huh. right. So when you have Jesus with you, yeah. you have the one who is the creator. But, but not only do we have the one that is the creator, we have the one who is Jehovah, the relational God. Yeah. Yeah. As we read in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, we must understand that God did not want us to be alone. And you 
You remember what he said in, in Elvin Genesis that, that God uh, 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 looked at it and, and he didn't want man to be alone, so he created a woman. And, and after he created a woman, but he did something even greater than that. Yeah. He allowed his son to be wrapped in human flesh to, to come to tabernacle among men. Yeah. Jesus says it like this, before Abraham was, I am. Yeah. Jesus is Adonai. He's the one who is in control. And, and I came by to tell you that that's good news. Yeah. And that's good news to know that even in this life, what we're going through, even as we have to deal with a pandemic, even though the world seems to be out of control, Jesus is still in control. Somebody, somebody ought to got, have gotten excited right there because maybe your life seems to be spinning around and, and it seems to be out of control. But I came by to tell you that Jesus is in uh, control. He's in the hem of our lives. He, he's the one who will bring things back into their proper Perspective, and so that's what we have. What we have, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have someone who is in control. He's he's omnipotent. He has all power. And I tell you, if you confess Him as your Lord and your Savior, and give Him authority over your life, uh -huh. He will put the life back in the right type of perspective. He will. Uh, to the right type of friends in your life. He will bring joy. He will bring peace. And he will bring stability to unstable life. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll guide you to the right type of relationships. Because he is an intentional God. Yeah. Jesus is, the Bible says, he's Jehovah Nisi. Uh -huh. And that's why he's with us so he could be our banner. He, he's the one who will fight our battles for us. And, 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 and you know what it says. Be still and know that he is God. Do you, do you, do you have any battles that you are fighting? Do you have any, any trouble in your life? Well, I tell you that, that, that you're in the mighty might a good place and you might a good company because John 16 and 33 reminds us that in this world uh -huh. you will have tribulation. Yes, but John says, be of good courage. I have overcome the world. I tell you, it's good news to know that God is with us. Yes. All right. From every hand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But you have Jesus. Yes, sir. Bad reports from the doctor. Yeah. But you have yes, Jesus. The children are not acting right. They're, they're failing in school. But but I tell you, you have Jesus. Yes, I tell you, came by to tell you that when you have Jesus, you, you have to understand that the battle is not yours. But but it's the Lord's going to have a witness here that will testify because I have Jesus. And because Jesus is with me, I have Trust him. Uh -huh. Because when you look back at his tra track record, he never lost the chase. Uh -huh. yeah. That's the news. You, you can trust him because uh, Dr. Jackson, I like to say it like this, he, he's the undisputed champ, meaning that, yeah. that no matter who he came up against, the fight, the battle was already, already won. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he is with us. He is Jehovah Rohi. The Lord is our Shepherd, and you do know that he will provide all of our needs. Why? Because he is Emmanuel. Yeah. Yeah. David says it like this in Psalms 23 The Lord is yeah. my shepherd, I shall yeah. not walk. Yeah. David is trying to remind us that because of the Lord is with us. Whatever state, whatever plight we find ourselves in, we, we have God's protection and he will provide for us as a, a good shepherd. Uh -huh. yes, sir. You know what a good shepherd will do, don't you? He'll guide. Uh -huh. He will guard and he will guarantee our, our safety. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He is with us. Yeah. 
He is Jehovah Jireh. Yeah. Paul says he's our provider and, and our God shall supply all of our needs mm -hmm. according to his riches and glory. Yeah. Thank God Thank that Jesus yeah. is with us. Yeah. He is the source of our supply. And, and I don't know about you today, but you ought to be shouting right now to know that it's not your job that's supplying uh, your every need. It, it's not the government that's taking care of you. It's not your finances that's taking care of you, but it's Jesus because uh, he's with us. Yeah. Jesus is El. He's El, El Young. In other words, he's the most high God. There's none like him. Help us. Yeah. He's Help. seated at the right hand of the Father. He's he's El Shaddai. He's God uh, Almighty. Uh -huh. yeah. Jesus says, I and the Father are one. And, and if you've seen me, you have seen my my Father. I tell you, he is with us. Yeah. Yeah. So we ought to be able to rejoice today. Why? Watch this. Because divinity was poured into humanity uh -huh. to dispel the insanity that you and I could experience eternity. <laughs> let, let, let me say that again. Divinity was poured into humanity to dispel the insanity that you and I could experience eternity. God took the divine deity wrapped in flesh to come and dwell among this mean and wicked world to save wretches like you and I. And thank God, even though we were wretches and dumb, God came and dwelt among us. He loved us so much that the Bible says in Romans 5 that, that God demonstrated his own love toward us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. I, I came by to tell you that he could not have died Take him out of Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. How can you? Thank you. Can you ask him out? I don't know about you, but what I do know that Jesus is the real reason for the season. I know that it's kind of cliche, but for those of us who are saved, sanctified, and been filled with the Holy Ghost, we know that He's the real reason. For the season. Yeah. For the Bible says without the shedding of blood. Yeah. There will be no remission of, of sin. And, yeah. and you know that Jesus said. I came that you might have a life. And, and have a life more abundantly. And the only way we can have a life more abundantly. Is that he had to give his life out on Calvary. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you have? When you have Jesus. You have someone who can identify with you. He knows where you are. He knows exactly what you're going through. And he's able to sympathize with our infirmities. I believe the songwriter had it right when he says, There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. No one who can heal our soul diseases. No, not one. No, not one. And then he says, Jesus knows yeah. all about our troubles. And he was sure to guide us to the day. The day is done. Oh, Lord, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. Yeah. So I tell you what you have when you have God with you. You have not only someone who can bear your infirmities and sympathize with you, but you have a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Yes, so not only does he identify with us, but he can handle every problem in our lives and give us a solution to our problems. Amen. Can I tell you that the Lord is working it out on your behalf? came by to tell you that all you have to do is trust him because he will never let go of you. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you that he is the fulfillment of all of God and all of who God is. On, huh? He wants to reveal to us himself. Yeah. And I came by to tell you if you're looking for Jesus, you're in the right place. Yeah. 
How do I know we're in the right place? Because the Lord is in this building. How do I know that uh, the Lord is in this building? Because we can feel the Holy Spirit moving all in our hearts. Even though we can't feel, see his face, we're, we're able to feel him. I thought parents would say it like this. What is this? That causes me to want to run when no one's chasing me. What? Is this that causes me want to jump? I, what is this that, that causes tears to fall down my face when there's nothing wrong? I tell you, it's Jesus. Tell you, tell you, it's Jesus. Anybody tell you? When you have God with you, you have someone who is a great deliverer. Came by to tell you that when you have Jesus with you, you have the Prince of Peace. Came by to tell you that when you have Jesus, you have everything that you need. When you have Jesus, he'll come in and sup with you. Do I have any witnesses in here? What do you have when you have Jesus? I came out to tell you you have someone who will go your bond. Do I have any witnesses in here? What do you have when you have Jesus? Someone said he's a bright and morning star. Is there anybody in here that has Jesus? On your side. Come here, Abraham. Tell me, what do you have? When you have Jesus, Abraham says, I have Jesus who is my redeemer. Come here, Abel, and tell me what you have. When you have Jesus, Abel says, I have a man who is my vindicator. Come here, Moses. Tell me, what do you have? Moses says, He's my push on fire. Come in, see me. Oh, what do you have when you have Jesus? He said he's a wheel in the middle of the wheel. Is there anybody in here that loves the man? Is there anybody in here? He walks with you. He talks with you. He tells you that he is your Is there anybody in here that has Jesus on his side? He'll be a healer. Do I have any witnesses in here? When you have Jesus, you have the light of the world. If I don't know about you, because 
are now up to our offering as we make ready to receive an offering. The Bible says we ought to be cheerful givers. Amen. In this season in which God has given so much to us, we ought to run to the plate and offer what we have unto the Lord. And thank him for his sustaining power in our lives. Here at the Great Emmanuel Church, we have options for giving. Don't forget, you can give by dropping your offering off here at the church during service times. Or you can give through our Giveify app or online. Those that are in the sanctuary that are now giving, we thank God for your gifts. Amen. We thank God that the work of God is still happening here in the Great Emmanuel Church. People still see the ultimate and larger vision of God. Amen. starting with our Sunday school. Thank you, Reverend Jackson, for uh, letting us know that Jesus still reigns. Yeah. One of these days, he's going to rule yeah. and he's going to judge righteously. Yeah. And we can be so grateful for that. We thank you for that, for reminding us that. And then, Reverend Emerson, we thank you for allowing us, letting us know that God is with us. And I am with church. I am with church. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for sharing your message with us today. We have a couple of visitors or a few visitors, if I would. Uh, and you all can stand. I think you've already stood stood once. Sister Edmondson, Sneakway yeah. Edmonds, and family. Yeah. Come on, wave to us. Come on, y'all. Welcome. Good yeah. morning. Yeah. Then we have, we have Ronald and Michelle Edmondson. Yeah. That's a brother of Reverend Edmondson. Come on, please welcome. Good morning. Thank you all for joining with us today in this telecast. Or pardon me for this service. Uh, we gladly uh, thank you for coming. We have a couple of birthdays we're celebrating today here at Great Emmanuel. Uh, Tree Berry, you see her, tell her happy birthday. And then Sister Tiffany Thomas. You do remember, don't you? Uh -oh. All right. Yeah, Sister Tiffany Thomas, happy birthday when you see her. And then we have a lot of birthdays this week, so continue to call around and tell everyone happy birthday. Listen. We do celebrate birthdays, but we do have to pray for our loss. We had a few loss this week. Uh, pray for the Ned family, loss of Sister Ned. And then pray for the Terry family, loss of Sister Terry. Yeah. Then pray for the Gibson, Robinson, and Moore family, the loss of a relative. Uh, these families are going through. Yeah. It's them this time, yeah. but it may be us one other time. So pray for, pray for these families. Yeah. Amen. And then pray for each other. Pray for every member of this church, all the sick and shut in going through. May, be, may not be sick, but uh, these times, as, as Reverend Edmondson Ryan reminded us, these times sometimes, time, sometimes pardon me, uh, can turn us upside down. But I want to thank all of you members who are, uh, make this program success each week. Uh, from 
Tyree, Rick Jackson, Weekly, uh, our telecast people, audio ministry, musicians. Uh, man, I mean, the finance committee in the back, I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart. You all make this, uh, I'm just out front, and I just want to thank you all for, for your continued support. And then maybe you're not doing that, but you're giving. I want to thank you for your giving. You all have been so faithful. I, I can just look back and see what Kyle Hustle instilled in us. And you all are so faithfully yeah. giving. Yeah. And listen, we're, 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 we're to be thankful for that. I'm thankful to God for your continued support and you support this ministry. We have another announcement. Uh, I want all of you all to, uh, it's been, I've been asked to tell everybody to remain seated until we log off, basically. After the presentation that we have today, so if everyone can remain seated, we have a little presentation uh, right after I get through and right after we get the final remarks from the pulpit. Again, I want to say Merry Christmas to all. Uh, enjoy Christmas. We will be back on next Sunday if it's the Lord's will. Uh, continues to practice social distancing. Continue to practice all of these guidelines. But listen, uh, we're gonna be able to do it. God is with us, great man. God is with us. <laughs> Despite how it looks, despite where we are, we have God with us, yeah. and I'm in so and so encouraged by that. And, and uh, like I'll say this: uh, people don't understand the way I do things, uh, but all of it is not me. Yeah. You'll get that on the way home. Let's all say amen again. Thank you again, Deacon Jennings. Thank you, Great Emmanuel, for allowing me to come and uh, to share my convictions concerning our Christ. If there's nothing else, let us stand.
receive your gift. We're going to do a fist bump. We're going to carry on. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do this year, first giving our praises to God, to all the ministers that are here, respect, and uh, to our uh, pastor husband uh, and, and his passing. I just want to say thank you to our church family. Thank you to our ministers, our deacons, and every the OG Hudson ministry, everybody who just contributes to continue, like you said, to continue to help have things to continue during the pandemic. And I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart, Reverend Robinson, as well for our youth ministry. So as I call your name, as I call your name, would you please come? Rayvon Smith. Amir Smith, I'm sorry, and as you come up, could you go to the choir stand, uh, the, our members go to the choir stand, then parents follow them, they're going to sit with a family, we're not sitting with groups, we're going to sit with family, so as you get your gift, go ahead and go to the choir stand, the ones that are, the church members that are here, Addison Brown, we had some donations that were given for gifts as well, so we could go to Addison Brown. Is this Jaisa Rogers? Antonio Henderson Jr.